Hi everyone. I took out a product that I've had for years and never really used. These are soft pastels and they're not real expensive and they're beautiful. And I thought, you know, I want to just see what these will do. So uh, rather than pick them up and color with them or, you know, make some marks, I just left them in the tray and used a wet uh, paintbrush on them and spread them onto some paper. And I was really surprised at how pigmented they were and how well they did. I tried it out on this um, paper that I purchased. I got this from Amazon and I do have some of this in my recommended products in my Amazon store. But this is calligraphy paper. And I read that it was very thin, which it is. I actually have a piece of it over here, I'll show you. It's very thin. Uh, somewhat like tissue paper, only it's a little bit, um, it's got a little bit more substance to it. What's interesting is it has um, a very slick back to it. Um, I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure how this is made. Uh, the top is more uh, matte and rough. Uh, not rough, really, but it has, I don't know if you can see it, but it has a little tiny bit of texture to it. But anyway, I thought that would be kind of cool to be able to have um, some paper that's a little bit sturdier uh, for making like collage papers with. And so I thought I'd give this a try, and I did. So what I found out is that these worked pretty well on that. Um, and I took uh, one of my address book pages. I'm still adding some paint to some of these uh, occasionally. And so I grabbed one of these and I had already added some pink uh, brush marks uh, when I was cleaning out a brush one day and I had just covered it in pink. And so what I had made was this little strip here with the uh, chalk pastels, the soft pastels. Um, I just you know, kept wetting the brush and going back. I didn't even pick these up. I just left them in the tray and just you know, ran my brush over it and uh, made a little... Uh, just a little mark on the page, and then I changed colors a few times and went down, and it was really pretty. So um, while it was still part of the calligraphy paper before I tore it out, I, uh, I coated what I had done after it dried. I coated it in um, a little bit of collage podge to kind of set the, uh, the chalk so it wouldn't uh, be coming off on my hands or anything. And I was really surprised that it didn't... Uh, reactivate very easily. I mean, I don't recall that it it did at all. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. And so uh, I made another strip later and um, it this this time it tended to wrinkle just a little bit when I put it down and I tore it a little because I was too rough with it. But um, I was surprised at how um, how it became kind of like part of the paper. I mean, you can barely feel that it's there. It's very, um, it's just very well attached. It glued down very easily. I believe I glued this down with um, a glue stick. And this one I glued down with the collage podge. And so that's probably why I got the wrinkles uh, here. But uh, if you just coat it with the collage podge, it's nice and smooth. And then I tore it out and attach that with a glue stick. So that's the way I'll I'll do that from now on. I won't do the um, the bit here that gets it too wet and wrinkly. So I did find that uh, while I was brushing the color on, if you brush back and forth too much, it will sort of start to come apart just a little bit. You get kind of like a little bit of a peeling where that top uh, layer of the, the matte uh, paper kind of starts wanting to come off. So I just, uh, the first time I must have done it properly because I didn't have too much of that. <laughs> but um, I found it really interesting to use this and um, and really fun. And I just stuck all kind of little scrappy bits uh, all over this piece of paper just because it was handy. And I thought, why not use all those, you know, little bits of color? So I don't know what I'll use this for. I could tear it up and use it in a project or I might at some point make another little address book, uh, altered address book pages <laughs> book and, um, and do that. So um, anyway, I decided to do uh, a little bit more of this uh, technique on that calligraphy paper and um, 
create a little tag with it, and then from there I decided to make an altered book page. <laughs> so the video that follows uh, this is uh, the process I, I went through doing that, and I'll probably pop in and um, talk to you here and there, tell you what I'm doing, uh, or clarify some things you know that I'm doing, because I don't really talk through this video while uh, while I was creating it, I didn't talk. So if I, uh, if I find it's necessary, I'll pop in and explain um, via voiceover. So um, we'll just get started with the process video. So here I'm uh, cutting out a little image that I uh, got from the pixabay.com site and uh, it's kind of funny when I got this little bird I liked it because it was colorful and, and cute but I didn't really have any plan for it and I had trimmed it out I mean I had you know cut it from the big sheet of paper that I printed it on and um, it was laying there beside where I was working with these colors and I was like, oh my gosh, that would blend so cool with my <laughs> match, so cool with this little um, tag I wanted to make. So that's why I decided to use it. But um, So here you can see I'm putting the collage page on the strips, and there's no smearing, no any you know loosening of the color or anything. I was just shocked. Um, I let it dry, you know, because it was wet from the water that I had put on, but uh, I did let it dry, and... Uh, and then I just put the collage page on and it just was beautiful. So then I uh, decided to tear it into a little strip to use on, um, on my tag. And um, I'm getting the straight edge off. I wanted a little bit of a torn edge, or I thought I did. You'll see how this whole process changes as I go along because I really didn't have a plan. I uh, was just sitting to play and didn't have a plan at all. <laughs> um, the next I decided I wanted some background color on my tag, so I used the uh, Soft Pastels again. That's a piece of watercolor paper underneath my little stencil there. And uh, I just wanted to uh, get it really um, coated, get that stencil really coated, because what I want to do is press the stencil onto my tag. And so I'm getting the, um, the stencil itself pretty wet with that color. And, um, and then I'm going to take it off of the um, watercolor paper and turn it over and hopefully print the image of the scribbly writing onto my tag. and it didn't do as well as I had hoped. <laughs> it's cool, it looks cool, but I wanted more color back there. So I decided I'm gonna use some of the puddles that are sitting on this watercolor paper. <laughs> and I just pressed it onto, onto the paper to pick up more color. And then I pressed it several more times just to get some more onto different e uh, edges and areas that uh, didn't have enough color on them. And then I was happy with it. 
Okay, I used this uh, Spectra Fix uh, fixative, and um, I like it. It doesn't have any odor or anything like that, and you can use it indoors. Um, and I did put it on and dried it, and I did that, I think, three times. Uh, put three light coats on it. And uh, at this point, I believe this is the last uh, time I'm drying it. Yeah. So then I went uh, ahead and coated it in some collage podge because, you know, just in case the Spectra Fix didn't hold the color still, I wanted to go ahead and coat it uh, just to be on the safe side. And then I decided I wanted a little bit more color. So I'm just dabbing some greens in for the background. I'll tell you what I was doing when I get a little further in the video. I'll tell you what I was thinking for the background here. So then, as I moved along, you know, laying out that strip on my tag, I did not like the way the colors were laying there. I felt like it needed more. So that's when I decided to put a piece of the black striped washi tape over the color because I knew it was going to show through. And then I liked it a lot more. I was happier. Then I added a couple of other uh, miscellaneous washi tapes. And um, so here you see that torn edge that I thought I wanted. Nah. Just went ahead and cut it straight <laughs> made it made it match that washi tape so uh, I did like the look of that I love all that color now it just needed the black I guess to uh, to anchor it and to make the colors really pop and then once I, uh, I had I had set the bird on there and I realized he needed some background and that's why I decided that pink would be pretty maybe like flowers in the background so I decided the green that I added on there would be um, would be kind of like resembling the idea of leaves also in the background. So maybe he's in a field of flowers or there's some shrubbery, you know, behind him. And um, it just kind of kind of gives the impression of the uh, flowers and leaves, the pink and green does. That washi tape there, I trimmed the straight edge off of it too. I, I trimmed out around those little scallops on the lace because it just looked a lot nicer that way. I had to peel my washi tape up just a little bit on that right side. I wanted to make sure that the, uh, the little branch got, got covered there. Okay, so then I took some more of that calligraphy paper and I had just painted with the same pinks that I had used previously. I just painted uh, some little floral shapes and um, decided I wanted to add them at the lower part of the tag. And um, so I just used the same soft pastels and uh, outlined them and then you know made some little marks with the markers on the inside of the, the for the centers of the flowers and um, I really like the way they turned out they're just really sweet
and then I cut them out using the water brush. You guys have seen me do that with tissue paper before, and this paper works the same way. I did find that this paper doesn't blend in quite as much as tissue paper does because, I guess because it is a little thicker. So I actually could have cut these out uh, with scissors and it would have probably been just fine because I did have to go back in and add a little bit of color after I um, adhered them to the tag. I decided I wanted to stamp some leaves uh, in there with uh, just a stamp I have in my stash. It's very old. Um, but I just wanted to put some leaves there and I wanted it to appear as if they're coming out from behind the flowers. So I just cut the little mask to uh, place there so that the leaves aren't on top of the flowers. It's a simple way to do it. If, if you use deli paper like that, you can see exactly what you're tracing and you cut it to, to fit exactly what you're masking, so it's perfect. It's just a little scrap of deli paper. And the stamp was, um, it was good, but it was, um, it definitely needed some definition, so after I stamped these last couple of leaves, I do go around it with a, a Sharpie and um, and give it a little bit, you know, outline them and, and then I used a pit pen to color them in a little bit more to, uh, to make a, the color a little bit heavier. So then I was like, okay, I need to use this tag now. I'm going to use it right away. I'm not going to put it, put it aside and have to find a place for it. I'm just going to put it in my book. <laughs> so I opened my altered book, found a page that I felt like the two pages would complement one another. And of course I have to add a little bit, like I added some pink tape to that blue page to make sure that, you know, things were tying in together and then I thought you know the color on that blue page was a little too heavy so I lightened it up by adding a bit of book text and uh, that helped a whole lot and um, I'm trying to make a light enough area that uh, that the tag shows up 
well and stands out because it is like the focal point of that page. I really like the way the book text looks, but um, it felt like it needed a little bit more washi tape. Then I started working on the other page, and you guys know that these pages that are that have all this color on it, this is just me using up paint cleaning off a brayer. I come back in and, you know, change change the page up quite a lot sometimes. This one needed a little bit of extra. I didn't have the page quite filled up, and so I added this green, watered-down green acrylic uh, around the edges of the page just to um, give it a little bit more color. And then I added a little bit of paint to the book text because um, it needed to look like it was part of the page and not just put on top of a painted page. So when you can add a little bit of paint or a little stamping or something like that to elements you're adding, they become more part of the page and they don't stick out like a sore thumb. So now I'm adding some more of the blue, uh, the teal color over on the right hand side to help it blend in with the page next door. and it needed a little brightening up, so I scribbled some white on the uh, blue circles as well. And added a little bit of uh, bubble wrap dots, which really made it a nice difference. And it matched with the bubble wrap dots on the other page. I decided I wanted to lighten the center of the right hand page because I wanted to put a quote there and so I put some gesso on the page and then used a wet uh, paintbrush to spread it around so that it was, wasn't too thick and there I'm just taking a uh, baby wipe to kind of blend out the edges a little bit. The pink was showing through a little too much so I added another coat of the gesso and dried it and um, and then I decided to add some of the um, black striped washi tape to the page so that it ties in with the tag so I put a couple of pieces of that on And off camera, I had taken um, some more of my strips and put the black tape on, I mean, excuse me, the black stripe tape on because I figured I would do what I'm doing now. I figured it, I would need to tie those colors in um, from the tag on the opposite page so that this page would have those colors, those same colors as well, same elements. So now there's three of those striped tapes with the color underneath it. And then I took some uh, the fluid matte medium uh, to cover that uh, area because I felt like the pink was coming through a lot 
and um, I thought maybe if I put a coat of the matte medium there, the pink paint wouldn't seep through so much. Uh, I put the, me the matte medium in there to be a barrier between the paint and the gesso, the watered down gesso that I was putting on again. So it did leave it a little bit whiter. It still got a, lot, a little bit of pink showing through in the end, but that's okay because I did want some of the color to come through. I just didn't want the pink to take over. Uh, I did want it to have more of a white look to it, and, um, and it does. So now I'm using the uh, black Posca pen to um, outline that little section there where I'm going to have a quote. Now back over on this uh, page, I felt like the tag was still not um, standing out as well as I wanted it to. Like the background was a little too dark and maybe busy. So I took a stencil and uh, used some white paint and um, that made me happy. I felt like that looked really good. And then placing a few um, torn strips and um, different little elements around the tag, I felt like that also helped it uh, quite a lot too. So I just went about uh, adding those into the, uh, the little clustery, tag clustery thingy. <laughs> I don't know what you call it, but <laughs> it was fun and I really enjoyed putting this, uh, this page together. It's, it's been quite quite fun. It's taken me several days to get this page done because I had a lot of things going on, but um, I really enjoyed putting it together. And that's a little piece of scrapbook paper that was just in my scraps, and I was like, yes, perfect. It, you know, kind of kind of more solid, and it kind of helped to, uh, to stop some of the busyness of the background. That's one of my little uh, stamps that I had in my stash from the uh, foam stamps that I created. I, you, you guys have seen me use that one before. And um, I'm just still using them because I had stamped several several of them at one time. So just scribbling with a pencil just a tiny bit. And, um, and then I feel like the tag is about ready to be um, put down. That white string really helped too. It just just made it look so, uh, so much brighter and nice. I really like the way just plain old white crochet thread. <laughs> and it, work, it worked perfectly. Okay, so tag is on. Got to weight it down uh, with some jars <laughs> and um, keep it in place and let that let that glue dry. Okay, this is a little um, a copy of a little leafy branch that I watercolored and I had copied it and I had thrown it in my little box of you know embellishments and I uh, pulled it out and it was so perfect uh, for the page it matched it and it needed uh, the little quote area needed a little something down there in that bottom corner bottom left corner so it felt like that was just perfect so I trimmed it out and uh, put it on the page now I'm adding just some random numbers cut from magazines. I, I like numbers and I think it looks kind of interesting to have a number here and there sometimes on a page. So now I'm just making those fit into the page as well. You see how they look so much better now with just a little bit of paint, you know, smeared on them. They look like they're part of the page and um, not, not that they've just been stuck there. So. So now I'm using my Stazon and a couple of different stamp sets um, to put my quote on. Uh-oh, that don't look good. <laughs> so that R is kind of crazy out there. So I decided, well, I'm going to cover it up 
with this color from one of the scraps. And uh, I really liked how it looked once I got that put in place. And so that mistake turned into a really fun element to the quote. Because as you'll see, I put color blocks in for some of the letters all the way through the quote. And I really love the way it turned out. Happy accident. I wanted to fill in some of the white areas with some doodling, so I just, you know, drew in a little uh, leafy branches and um, outlined those. Outlined my letters. And, uh, You'll see in the picture at the end um, that I did add a few more little doodly elements to the quote. Uh, and I did that after the fact, after I had finished filming. And um, it really looks um, fun. Okay, so I'm going to call this one done. I, um, I really enjoyed it. I, I hope you all enjoyed watching my process um, as I went through and just played. Um, that's really what I'm using this book for the most is just to play uh, when I want to do something creative I just a lot of times will sit down and open this book and just play that's just what I did you know on this one uh, a few weeks back and I mean just this one too I didn't even I didn't even film this one where'd it go I, I didn't even film this one one day I just sat down and started tearing up stuff and playing with paint and scribbling and gluing and it was just so much fun just to play. So I hope you guys um, will get a little bit of inspiration and, um, and want to sit down and play. And, you know, the more you do this stuff, the easier it gets. Um, I know that, that there's times when there, you feel a little trepidation and you're just not really sure what you want to do, and that's okay. But um, my honest-to-goodness advice is just to go ahead and start doing something, even if you're just gluing down some papers or just smearing on some paint, you know, with a credit card, with a paintbrush, um, whatever. If you're just picking up paint from a mat with some wadded-up tissue paper and just stamping it all over, just get started. And then as soon as you do that, you'll start to feel more creative things happening. You'll be like, oh, now I can do this. And wouldn't it be cool if I did that? And that's how you you get a, a page going, or that's how you get your creativity to, to start flowing and how you're able to actually get something on a page or on a card or whatever it is that you're creating. So 
I just want to encourage everybody to play. Just play. And remember, you know, my motto is it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be fun. That's all. So um, I hope you all will have some fun and um, create and enjoy it. We'll see you again soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.